another interesting development in amongst our five teams this past week was the hiring of uh, Carter Hawkins as the, I believe he's the 16th gen- new general manager in Cubs history. Uh, it's kind of weird to think that they've only had 16 general managers over 140 whatever years, but um, yeah, Carter Hawkins. Um, I've, you know, I knew they were looking for a GM. I kind of forgot they didn't have a GM for this entire off season or this entire 2021 season as Jed Hoyer was promoted to president. Um, I don't know if anyone really noticed, uh, kind of makes you question like what, what's the role of a president versus what a GM or assistant GM or what those titles really mean. But, uh, I've never done a ton of research on who the hot GM candidates were. So I wasn't crestfallen or super excited when I heard someone I never heard of Carter, Carter Hawkins was hired as their GM. Um, I, maybe this is just me, and this is my this is my first thought when it happened. This is really weird, but I heard Carter Hawkins, and for some reason in my brain, you know, I heard the announcement on the radio that Carter Hawkins was going to be the new GM. And I immediately assumed it was a black guy. The, the name Carter Hawkins just sounds like a black guy to me, and I guess it's because in, in like junior high, one of my best friends uh, was his name is Kwame Hawkins, and a uh, black kid that was our like the best soccer player on our AYSO team. So for some reason in my head, if your last name is Hawkins, you must be black, but I don't know. Is that racist? <laughs> uh, well, we're... We're racist against Hawkins, I guess, but uh, yeah. uh, whatever. Possibly I mean, there. Well, he was a super cool kid. So I was actually, <laughs> the, but my first thought was, Oh, cool. The, the, the Cubs actually followed up on what Theo was talking about last summer and are getting some fucking diversity up in that place finally. No. Now, Theo, no. Theo uh, famously last summer uh, talked about how you know he had to reevaluate their hiring processes cuz it felt like they were just hiring more and more people that looked just like him. And you know, I didn't think about that necessarily during the during the GM search process or you know, I wasn't like pining for for a diversity candidate or anything like that. But it just popped in my head when I heard the name that made all those connections at once. So like, Oh, cool. Maybe we have some diversity, but uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, does it, does, does it really matter? But uh, no, Carter Hawkins is just a yuppie white guy, just like everybody else in every front office in baseball. So we can, we can cross that off the list, but I don't know anything about him. Do you know anything about him? I, like I said, I don't, I wasn't doing massive research on who hot, you know, who the hot assistant general managers were across the cross major league baseball. I mean, I, I think um, kind of like what we discussed off the air, I think he's a hire because they have had a shit ton of problems developing young pitchers. That's what and I was going to, that's definitely what I was going to get to, but uh, I mean, I, I, I don't, you know, I just know what was like on the surface about him. And that was the focus of the article I read on ESPN was just that the idea of hiring him was because of their development of, of pitchers coming from an organization who's kind of flourished in developing young pitchers. He came from, yeah, he came from the Cleveland now guardians. Uh, Yes, they are the Guardians now. Yes. So or is he, it is it December? I can't remember, but we'll go with the Guardians he, going they, forward. Henceforth on this podcast, they will be known as the Guardians, which is still laughable to me. But uh yeah, Carter Hawkins was the director of player development or whatever bullshit title he had, or many titles he had over his, I believe, 14 years in the organization, but he was uh definitely highly involved with the player development system and cleveland is very famous for developing pitchers and that is the, like you said that's the biggest failure of the theo jed regime is developing pitchers so i i, I like that idea um hiring to fill a, a major weakness with a with a major strength so in theory um that that makes a lot of sense to me on the surface um I guess my my only other thought about the whole thing, and I kind of already mentioned this, but is why you know the Cubs didn't even have a general manager this whole year. And did anyone really notice? I mean, what 
what is the job description of a general manager these days when you have a structure with a, a president of baseball operations as the Cubs started that with Theo 10 years ago and continue that with uh, promoting Jed after Theo left. Do we even need a general manager? I guess is my point. Like what, what, what's the point? I mean, are we just like, are these just titles that are, have shifted over time? You know, Jed, Jed's making the decisions. He's not, he's not handing the reins over cart over to Carter Hawkins. I think, I think you could easily just call Jed the, the GM you know, that we've been familiar with all this time and Hawkins would now be the assistant GM in a lot of ways. So I think it's kind of meaningless. I think it's interesting and I think it's a, probably a good idea to bring in somebody from outside the organization that has shown a proclivity to develop young pitching. So I, I think it's a positive, a net positive, but it might be a little less consequential than, than many are giving it credit for. So those are, yeah. those are my thoughts. So yeah, I kind of think last year though, they didn't, even bother with getting a GM because I think the plan from the beginning of the season was to dismantle the team. Yeah. Well, they couldn't and, afford a GM last year because of the well, physical losses. Well, so how could they closet. possibly pay but such a person massive salaries? So. There was no reason to bring in someone uh, to just trade away your top talent. They, they really didn't need to. Why, why, why even to your point? I mean, I know you're making just on the biblical losses, but like, why even bother to pay someone if you know, like they had the old shit moment when they were in first place. Yeah. Ricketsville. Exactly. Yeah, there was here. like, there was like the, the, you, you, I don't know if you agree with me, but I feel like when they were in first place and then all of a sudden Jed comes on and says, well, if you know, if, if it deems it at the trading deadline, we'll add. That was not what anyone <laughs> wanted to do in the front office. And no. they were like, what the hell is going on? That was that was like, propaganda to keep the fans interested. So. No, but like, but like, you know, you wonder, you, you, you wonder if they had stayed in it, what the hell would have happened? But we, we will never know. But like, you know, it was like, what the hell is going on? This is not what we plan to do. We plan to tear it down and, and rebuild it and, you know, if if what they say is true, they're going to rebuild it very quickly because uh, apparently, according to uh, Tom Ricketts last week, they have the resources oh, are available now. The they magically have the resources so. to to pay players, and they're going to focus on power arms. So, wow! All right, glad glad Ricketts decided all those things. So, yeah. The key thing is if he opens his pocketbook up again and stops complaining about how much money he's lost, that that'll be a, a net positive, I'd say so.